All right, awesome. Thank you for your patience. Again, hey there, good morning, welcome. Thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Isabella Ram. I'm both an illustrator and designer here at Stout, and I had the awesome pleasure of working with Milwaukee Tool last summer over in Brookfield. Uh, in addition to being a designer, I really pride myself on illustration. Uh, as much as I do love being called an industrial designer for the sketching, for the space, for the collaboration, there's something that's really enamoring to me about simply being called a creative problem solver. Um, since I was, since I could hold a crayon uh, and I could figure out how Hulk's body was configured, uh, there was something that it's just very humbling uh, to solve problems visually, whether that be with a crayon or going forward into more complex things, fun contraptions, or simply being able to tell stories, not just verbally, but visually. I think that there's something very captivating about that, um, being able to share it and, and just explore things with others. Um, I've always loved it, and it's been key to who I am and how I go forward in life. Um, in addition to that, I love caricature. I love illustration. As I mentioned before, it's something that I think is really key to my process, and it puts a unique spin on how I view my design work um, and trying to tell stories a little bit differently. So going forward, I hope that you see that in some of the design work that I share with you today. Three projects I would love to highlight are Leaflet, Xerxes, and the Bashful Brush, each which focus on illumination, dynamic furnishing, and transforming a simple task into a toy and a kind of a playful experience. So the first product I would really love to highlight is my Martinelli's Apple Juice Jar Inspired Lamp. Uh, this became kind of a faux sponsored project. Uh, my dad and I, we love finding weird jars and things at the dollar store. And this juice jar just really caught our eyes. Um, so that was really driving a lot of my ideation. Um, I love process. You'll see a lot of that here today. Um, knowing that it was apple inspired with apple juice, a lot of my forms were very nature inspired. But I also wanted to think about some complex curvature, adding some unique flair to this form, but also maybe some handy storage, pun intended. Uh, but again, my forms really, st really started to hark back to that tree-like form. How could I incorporate kind of a hanging apple from that tree in a way that was, would be not only utilitarian, but fun? So it's going forward with these forms. There was some, some inspiration coming forward with that tree, um, how, it, how it would suspend a bulb and potentially hold books as, as it would be a reading lamp, um, especially you know, holding this jar. I really love the idea of being able to rec have a rec reclamation process with this company, work together, have a partnership to celebrate this jar where it could be sent back to the company and people could have their jar cut and fit to be in the bulb shade. Um, but initially, this model coming from the sketches uh, it just wasn't doing it. Um, I mean, it had a really utilitarian feel. It, it presented the bulb in a unique way, suspending that, but it was really distracting for the right to repair aspects of it. It was inaccessible for users, and so going forward, I just decided to completely scrap that. I, the next day, I jumped into Illustrator uh, as well as SolidWorks. I was really excited. Um, I, I created my own tree silhouette and started branching that out. Uh, I, immediately after that, it was just a really quick process. It was very exciting. I dove into laser cutting. Uh, I used some simple plywood forms. I also stitched together a spine, uh, so it was almost like a book coming together, having some of that aesthetic coming through with the books that would hold the cord in the back. There would also be some small shelves on the inside to help support and, and span and hold that bulb into place, as well as the feet on the bottom to hold the books and display those. Additionally, uh, kind of starting to build more of that story aspect, I had some really fun, simple packaging that kind of harked back to uh, those slip cases for books, celebrating that. But even more exciting uh, was this right to repair bookmark, where I really wanted to encourage people to turn over a new leaf, if you want to say it, that going with leaflet, um, and, and encouraging people to be inspired by sustainable repair, keep that in their mind, but also you got to turn over a new leaf with, you got to continue reading, right? You got to have a purpose uh, for those books to be there and celebrate that. So this is a bookmark that can be stored with the book or held on the lamp. Um, as you see here, it's a really fun project. You see this come to life. Um, you can hold four, five books in that space. And then here is it in all its glory, lit up, which was even more fun to see that kind of that, that amber glow, that warmth is really imp important to reading and kind of calming down before bed. And there it is in kind of a, a, a glory shot again. Uh, my next project, I'm very excited to share. This was super fun, that sprint that was mentioned before with room and board, uh, talking about uh, dynamic furnishing, working primarily with 3D printing. They were super excited about that, and that, that, that excitement was definitely contagious. I was looking at, I was really inspired after going to their showroom, looking at the cubic and cell side table. Something about the interplay between positive and negative space was really powerful. And so I thought that'd be really uh, you know, key to bring into, there was so much potential to look at that in the 3D printing world. Initially, many of my sketches were heavily manufactured based, looking at how the path could follow, making sure that there could be accessible modularity, uh, but none were more as, or as, as dynamic as that bottom sketch there with this kind of cube. Looking at how planes shifted, it became even more to life and real, realized through a simple a paper and cardboard models, looking at potential for storage on top as a table, but also maybe below in that storage area, whether it be an art piece 
Yeah, but there still was something missing. Uh, room and board, they have a really unique way to kind of give an innate sense of warmth to their products. And so I thought, why not add uh, a material swatch on top as a removable tabletop that could be accessorized by the user and um, become even more of a dynamic companion. Uh, it'd be perfect for sunny lounging days, or it could be right, right by you in the office. Um, so it adds that accessorization, customization to its product while still highlighting that flow of the 3D printing material that they really take pride in. Um, additionally, you'd be at a height where you could remove that top. If it was outside, you got to pull up an extra seat by the bonfire. You could use this table as a little stool. Um, additionally, this would be split into two parts for printing, uh, just for the ease of printing it, uh, for shipping and storing. But also, uh, if, it were, if one part were damaged outside, it could be easily ground down, recycled, and reprinted as part of their process to celebrate that. It could be the same piece, or it could be a different color for users to mix and match. Here's some a little bit of eye candy. These were super fun to craft, looking at both an outdoor and an indoor space uh, for that uh, for this form. I think it really shows that, di that diversity and versatility of it and also showcasing some of their unique furnishings like their blankets. Um, people really liked that. Last but not least is my kid robot inspired toothbrush which I wanted to take a mundane task and transform it into a toy and a playful experience. Uh, kid robot they're known for their very sculptural forms. Uh, they're, very, they're focused more toward the adult audience but there's also a really unique way that kids can interact with these toys too. Um, they're very sculptural, focused, focused as toy as art, but they also have a lot of really great attitude, they're very bold. So I wanted to find a way to bring that into a new space, which was toothbrushing. Uh, because both kids and adults struggle to brush their teeth on a regular basis, so why not make it more fun and engaging? Um, and without even realizing it, I kind of created this visual hierarchy of my sketches, going from more naive uh, and playful to more ergonomic, uh, and trying to find that balance at the end of Kid Robot, um, that that natural charm with kind of that traditional white bulbous form, but having it be accessible, but also playful and finding that balance uh, was really unique and uh, some of my favorite sketches. But going forward, I ended up with the Bashful Brush Buddy. Uh, it's a fun little guy there uh, with a unique uh, ergonomic kind of funky grip that would, that would sit uh, kind of nest in uh, a contact charging base that would be simple enough so people wouldn't have to be fighting lining up that peg at, at night, you're kind of drowsy. Also, you'd be alerted by light and also vibration to, to alert you when um, you'd be finished brushing. And also there's some little side companion hands for flossers and things like that to help you on your morning or, or night routine. Lastly, I just wanted to put a highlight on my senior project. I love play-based learning and I really wanted to bring that into a project that um, could inspire cross-generational play between parents and kids. Uh, so I wanted to, to look at uh, some way that a routine could be developed in meal preparation that was fun uh, for kids and adults. So excited to keep cranking through that. And just a big thank you again for all your time. This is a very unique opportunity. And I really want to thank, of course, IDSA, all the companies I've had the fortune to work with, Stout, uh, DRock, Jen and Andy. It's been a pleasure. It's your relentless efforts both in and out of the shop. You're crazy. So my heart goes out to you. Um, the guest designers today, I really appreciate it. My design peers, it's been also an immense pleasure, all the camaraderie and, and challenges that have come up. I also just wanted to give a big thanks to Amy Victor. She's been a really big support in my time at Stout in the life drawing department. I've taught with her, so that's been a really cool way to integrate that into my design work and how I see so thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure.